As I'm sure many of you already know, I didn't sell my Jeep Liberty. I gave it to my brother. So it stayed in the family. This is a project that I'm resurrecting from the dead. And speaking of resurrecting from the dead, I started filming this almost a year ago, June of 2021. It is now March of 2022. And today we're gonna turn my brother's boring diesel Jeep Liberty into something trail ready. I wanna start with the low hanging fruit. We're gonna do a three and a half inch lift from Skyjacker. We're gonna do some JBA adjustable upper control arms, and then we're gonna to toss on a set of Chunky 31s from Milestar. lift kit on a Jeep Liberty is just like doing a lift kit on pretty much anything else. You're going to replace your shocks and springs. Sometimes you're going to have to replace some different arms or extend some bump stops. But I found that lifting this Jeep Liberty with a three and a half inch lift was a pretty simple and straightforward process. amazing what a simple lift and tires can do for the overall looks of a rig and I think that this Jeep Liberty looks absolutely awesome for only being on a chunky 31 but I know that clearance in the back of the wheel well is going to become a problem so we're going to do what's called a cut and fold we're going to cut the pinch seam on the body and then we're going to fold it over and fill it with seam sealer It's been eight months, folks. Eight months since we started this project. And what was holding us up was the roof rack. Now we're gonna be able to mount the roof rack. We waited, we were waiting for a roof rack that never came. So my brother broke down and bought this Rhino Rack platform. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna mount the Rhino Rack to the Liberty. As you can see, we've already mounted up some LP6s on top, amber lens. It's just gonna look so good when it's all said and done. So my brother came over, he helped me set it up here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade all this plastic nonsense to steel. So this is gonna apply to a lot of you that buy SUVs like this, that, that they have like the plastic rails on top and there's not a lot of options out there for how to mount a rack. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbolt these different bolts that are going into solid anchor points but we're gonna pull all this plastic off. We're gonna make our own steel feet and we're gonna make sure that whatever we mount up top there does not come off. My brother has never had a rooftop tent and I've got this rooftop tent on my tow truck that I only use every so often. So I'm gonna let him borrow it. It's a rooftop tent from Guiana Equipment that I got from offroadtents.com. And I think it's the perfect look to go with this Liberty. If you've done any roof rack work by yourself, you know that it's particularly challenging. Pulling the rack on and off by yourself is almost impossible, but even just moving it around, leveling it out, and trying not to scratch up the roof of the vehicle is particularly difficult. I got a couple ideas today that I want to try out and we'll see if they help. I'm 
I'm trying out a tool for this job that in the building trades we called an air wedge. And this is just a small inflatable bag that should make it easy for me to level things out and take accurate measurements as well as lift the rack up whenever I need to install these brackets and then easily lower it back down without having to call anybody to come help me move things around. I'm sure they sell these on Amazon, so if I can find some, I will throw those in the Amazon shopping cart in the description of this video. As you can see, we got these brackets done yesterday and we let the paint cure overnight. So it's not completely cured yet. We're actually gonna start a fire right now and give them a little bit more time to cure because it is super cold in the shop over the last few days. And I wanna make sure that we don't like smudge the finish or anything whenever we're installing them on my brother's Jeep. So as far as material thickness is, this is 3 16 This is inch and a half by inch and a half square tube. And I believe that is eighth inch wall. I get questions about material thicknesses um, almost every video that I build something. And another thing I get questions about is paint. I'm using Seymour truck bed coating. This is what I've been using on everything for the last few months. And so far, I love it. I think it's a really good compromise between gloss and, uh, and flat. It's a really nice semi-gloss finish and it just looks great. It's durable stuff too. Now, while we're letting the stuff cure um, from the heat of our fire, we are going to do a little upgrade on the front of this Liberty. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to see in the camera, but the back is about an inch higher than the front. And that's because this is a diesel, so it's heavier than the gas engine. Um, and we have a winch on the front. And the other issue is that the bottom of our strut will actually go start to dig into the CV boot if this wheel tucks all the way up. Um, it's rare that that would ever even happen because this has a sway bar, a big heavy duty sway bar on it, but we wanna make sure that it can't happen. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna install this new fork, new to us fork, from I believe a 2009 Jeep Liberty. My brother did some research online and this is gonna give us an inch lift in the front um, just by replacing this fork that's on the bottom of the strut. And it's gonna space the bottom of the strut away from the CV boot enough that it should fix our problem and make it to where there's no chance we're gonna have any contact up there. Take a look at that. I think this looks so much better already. Just chunky tires, a little bit of a lift. Now it's leveled out and we have a roof rack on there. And we're putting a big square flat shape on a round vehicle. So it's gonna look a little bit odd, but I think that it still looks a heck of a lot better than those goofy pieces of plastic that we had on the roof before. So now what we need to do is connect the lights. I've got these harnesses from Baja Designs. We've got one, one harness for every two lights and we have four lights. So we need to put together two harnesses, two switches, and getting the stuff into the cab and out of the cab and up on the roof is gonna be kind of a challenge. So my brother's coming over and we're gonna take a look and see where we need to drill because clearly we're gonna have to put some holes in the firewall. I 
think I found a pretty decent alternative to drilling a hole in the firewall, and that looks like one of these plugs on the A pillar I might be able to slip through that hole. We decided to table wiring up the lights for a later date because this Liberty has to go off road tomorrow and we'd love to have the awning on it for this trip. So instead we're gonna install the awning and I'm just gonna have to wire up all the lighting another time. I think that this little diesel Liberty project is proof that if you shop around, you can still get a lot of bang for your buck and you don't have to do one of these $100,000 quote unquote overland builds that you see a lot of us YouTubers do on a regular basis. You can pick up a fully loaded diesel Liberty with leather, heated seats, just exactly like you see here for five to eight grand. You're gonna be getting somewhere between 20 and 25 miles per gallon. And if you bolt on some good off-road gear, this becomes a very usable, very practical daily driver and family camping rig. I guess what I'm trying to say is run what you brunk. If you've got a Jeep Cherokee, build a Jeep Cherokee. If you've got, you know, a, a Suzu Amigo, build that. You don't have to go out and blow tons of money on a brand new truck in order to have fun off-road. And you're going to see this Jeep Liberty on the same trails as $100,000 builds all summer long. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching.